What's up, everybody? Today is a big, big day because for the first time since probably age 14, I am excited for a new Terminator movie. That's right, back then when Terminator 3 was coming out, I was a little bit too young to know any better. But we just saw yesterday the Terminator Dark Fate trailer, so let's talk about that. I've been excited for this movie since it was first announced. A couple of years ago, we found out that James Cameron was taking the franchise back over. The rights reverted back to him. That was good news. Then Tim Miller came on board to direct. That's the director of Deadpool. And I was happy about that. A little bit weary just because... Deadpool was a good movie. I enjoyed it. All the action in it was competently shot, but we haven't seen this director do something that would fit the tone of a Terminator film, so it's just a little bit untested. But then we found out that this movie is going to ignore all the events of any films that took place after Terminator 2 Judgment Day, making this a direct sequel to the original beloved classics. On top of that, we find out Linda Hamilton is coming back as Sarah Connor, and any promotional material we've seen with her so far looks fantastic. So I was going in excited for the movie. How did the trailer look? Overall, I was fairly positive on it. There are a few things that I'm mixed on, which we'll get into as we break down the trailer. Probably the first thing you notice about this trailer is the music. You know the song? We're going hunting. And it's an interesting song choice because it's actually a cover of a Bjork song, Hunter. And this is sort of a trope we've seen in recent action movie trailers where you'll hear a sort of soft, melancholy song played over nearly silent action sequences. It's kind of been done before, but to be honest, it works on me every time and I liked the effect it had in this trailer. It sets a tone for this film, which kind of sets it apart from previous films, and it makes you feel something and tells me that they're maybe going for something a little bit more than just an action movie. Maybe there will actually be characters that we care about in this. Though, then again, it is a trailer, and sometimes the tone of a trailer doesn't exactly match the tone of a film. I'm looking at you, Suicide Squad. Then the first action sequence of this trailer is revealed, where we see Mackenzie Davis's character, Grace, facing off against Gabriel Luna's Terminator, where he's sort of mowing down uh, cars in a car chase sequence. She throws a metal rod at him. He grabs it, and then we see a very cool new ability revealed for this Terminator, where he's able to sort of leave his robot skeleton behind and create a human-like copy of himself. And the effect where he splits in two was sort of creepy and to me harkened back to the tone of the first Terminator, where it had some horror vibes. Now, after that point, the sequence started to lose me a little bit because the CGI felt kind of fake. Specifically, I'm thinking of the point where the Terminator, after he forms that human copy, and that sequence to me looked great, but as soon as he formed that human copy and then jumped off the car with the metal rod, I got Matrix Reloaded vibes there where he looked sort of a little bit off. Now, I will say in this whole scene, Mackenzie Davis looked super badass, looked like she's going to be a blast to watch, and should be a great successor to Linda Hamilton. Speaking of which, she shows up right after that and has a great sequence where she shoots at the Terminator a few times and blows him away with a rocket launcher. This sequence to me really harkened back to Terminator 2. It reminded me of any of the sequences where Arnold Schwarzenegger blasts away at the liquid metal Terminator and it puts those holes in his body. This scene felt like it could have been in Terminator 2. And actually, this was probably the only sequence to me that really fit the tone of the other Terminator movies, uh, at least the first two Terminator movies. Otherwise, this trailer really set itself apart and felt very different, which... 
you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing. We'll talk about that. I'd also point out that this five to six second action sequence where we introduce Sarah Connor in this trailer is the most grounded, realistic action that we see in the trailer. And that's probably one of my knocks against this trailer because that was my favorite scene for the reasons I just mentioned, because it looked so real and grounded. Most of the other action we see felt, at least to me, pretty CGI heavy. Then an interesting thing happens here where a title card appears on the screen and says producer James Cameron returns. Now I thought that was interesting because people like us who follow movie news, we know that James Cameron hasn't been involved in the franchise for years, but I do wonder if mainstream audiences know that. When people see this trailer, Will they recognize that essentially what they're telling us without saying it is, hey, if you didn't like the last few Terminator movies, don't worry. We're going to do it right this time. We're bringing it back to the way things were. That's how I interpret that title card. But I wonder how people who aren't in the know will interpret that. Now we get a little hint at the plot of this movie because Sarah Connor comments on Mackenzie Davis's character I haven't seen one like you before. You almost seem human. And then Mackenzie Davis says, I am human. And throughout the trailer, we see her do some very Terminator-like moves. When the Terminator threw the metal rod at her, it kind of scraped against her arm, and we could see metal underneath her skin. So going in, you think she's a robot, a Terminator, but it seems like that might not be true. So there's a question here. Is she some kind of human Terminator hybrid? Or is she a Terminator that thinks she's human? I'm guessing it's the former, where she's some kind of enhanced human. But we'll find out. Then we hear Mackenzie Davis's character, Grace, ask Sarah Connor why she's helping her, in reference to Natalia Reyes's character, Danny Ramos. And what Sarah says is, because I was her. This is the first time in the trailer we hear the implication that this girl is important to the future and they need to protect her. Later in the trailer, we hear somebody ask, how do we win? And then Grace says, by saving her, by keeping her alive. So it's pretty clear that she is the John Connor, she is the Sarah Connor of this movie. She is the one that they need to protect. Now on the one hand, I kind of like that they're slimming the plot down and going back to the basics. We're not in the future, we're not traveling through time throughout the film, at least not from what we've seen so far. We're back to the basic premise of there's an important character in the future who needs to be protected from a Terminator in the past. I like it on one hand. On the other hand, do we need to see that plot again? You know, maybe they'll do something different with it. It's a little bit too early to tell. Now, there's an important sequence in here that we have to talk about. We see Sarah Connor, along with Mackenzie Davis's character and Natalia Reyes's character, approach this cabin that sort of seems to be in the woods, isolated. Whoever's in there doesn't want to be found, wants to stay off the grid. The door opens, and we see a grizzled old Arnold Schwarzenegger. So what the heck is going on here? I'm going to do some speculation based purely on the facial expressions that we see in this scene. So first question, this Arnold Schwarzenegger, is it a human or a Terminator? The only reason that you might think for a moment that it's a human is because he is clearly aged. His hair is gray. He has a little bit of facial hair. And I wouldn't expect him to be an aged Terminator because they kind of already did that plot in Terminator Genesis. And I would think that they want to stay away from anything that happened in that movie. But I have to say, I do believe that this Arnold Schwarzenegger is a Terminator just because of how stoic a face he has when he opens the door. I saw that face and the first thing I thought was robot, Terminator. Then cut to Sarah Connor. The face that I saw from her was sort of a, I'm not sure what I'm expecting to find behind this door. So that implies to me that it wasn't Sarah who chose to go to the cabin. It was maybe Mackenzie Davis's character. Because she has these cybernetic enhancements, or maybe she's a Terminator, my impression is that she's come from the future. So my wild, speculative guess here is that this Terminator was sent back in time at some point to basically wait out here 
in the woods as a failsafe. This is a plan B. If all goes to hell and you need backup, there's a Terminator waiting for you in this little hut. Go out there if you need to and break him out. That's your secret weapon. So that's my thought. Why is he aged? Maybe they just chose to design the Terminator that way this time around. Who knows? From there, we go into some quick cut action sequences. We see one where one airplane crashes into another airplane and the Terminator jumps on top of it. That's the sort of action that I'm kind of checked out on. CGI heavy, at least from what we saw in this trailer, didn't look super interesting to me. But then you cut to a warehouse sequence where it seems a little bit more grounded. You see Mackenzie Davis slam the Terminator in the face with a sledgehammer. Now, I liked what I saw in that warehouse sequence in the sense that I could see what's going on. It wasn't the modern day kinetic, tons of cuts, crazy action sequence. It was, it was very steady cam. You can understand the geography of the fight. What I didn't like is, again, any time a character was doing any sort of crazy movement, like Mackenzie Davis swinging the sledgehammer at the Terminator, felt a little bit CGI to me. Particularly egregious was the close-up on the Terminator's face after he got hit by the sledgehammer. You see all the skin missing on one half of his face where he got hit, then you see that skin sort of reform and heal. That looked very fake to me. So I didn't love that. So overall, like I said, I liked the trailer. I was kind of mixed on a few things. Uh, what I liked is basically any sequence where I couldn't see a lot of CGI looked great to me. Linda Hamilton and Mackenzie Davis look like they're going to be a blast in this movie. They look like they're putting their heart into these roles, and I can't wait to see what they do with the characters. We haven't seen much from Natalia Reyes yet, so it's kind of too early to tell uh, what she's up to. I'll also say the hints we've gotten of the grounded action. Like Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor blasting away at the Terminator. I loved what I saw there, and I hope we see more of it in the film. The sledgehammer scene would also be right along with that one if they can get the CGI right. And like I said, maybe it looks better in context. I don't want to harp too much on that CGI issue, but it just was pretty blatant to me throughout the trailer. I do like that they're going for a sort of different tone in this film, it looks like, but I do hope that they're... There is some callback to the original two Terminator films. In this trailer, it really only, I mentioned there were only a few seconds where it felt like it was in the same vibe as those first two movies. So I'm hoping there's a little more of that in the actual film. You know, I'd love to hear the dun 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 dun. Bum 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 bum. I want to hear that original Terminator music, but honestly, that's not a fair criticism of the trailer. That's really just nostalgia talking, so I won't hold that against the movie. And then just a few random thoughts. Uh, we saw very little of the plot in this trailer, which I'm very happy about. I want to go... I like going into a movie knowing very little about the actual storyline, so I like that they've given us a flavor for the action, a flavor for the tone, but haven't really told us what's going on in this movie. And a couple of questions I have around that are, did Judgment Day happen? Terminator 2 ended with the implication that they were able to stop Judgment Day. So has this movie taken the same route as Terminator 3, where they basically say you can't stop it no matter what you do, it is destined to happen? Or are they going to put a slight twist on that? And where's John Connor? They didn't mention him in the trailer. I can't imagine he doesn't get mentioned in the movie. My guess is he's kind of hiding out, being protected somewhere. Hey, maybe he's in the cabin with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who knows? So overall, I liked what we saw here. It definitely looks like this is going to be the best sequel we've seen uh, you know, over Terminator 3, over Salvation, over Genesis. It looks like they're really aiming for the right things. Like I said, I just hope they can get these action sequences right. I hope they look better in the movie itself. Uh, but overall, I'm very positive on this, very excited about it, and looking forward to the next trailer. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever we come out with more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.